Hey everybody, welcome back to the Sky Lounge here to review some Lakers action as we win 118 to 109 against the New Orleans Pelicans at the Staples Center. And a very special guest at the Staples Center for this game, boys and girls, Ric Flair. Oh my god, celebrating his birthday, just an amazing fucking atmosphere in the building. And he sets the stage for such a fucking epic introduction to the Lakers and LeBron James. And... In the background of all of this is KCP screaming his head off and just going crazy. And I'm right there with him like, woo! Let's go! Ric Flair is here! Ric Flair trip! Go woo on a bitch! Woo! Woo! Gotta woo it down a little bit to talk about this game. Because in this game, the Lakers started off hot. They started off guns a-blazing. But you see modern basketball and the blow-by assignments defensively. And you're thinking, ah. It's the first quarter. I'm going to just let that go, right? And Lakers kind of let it go by the end of the first quarter, leading it 26-30. to 30. But Brandon Ingram gets a buzzer beater shot in there, makes it. So it's only a four-point game going into the second quarter. But here's where things get very, very interesting, boys and girls. Caruso. Alex Caruso. Gets plugged into the lineup in the second quarter. And lo and behold, the Lakers go on a 7-0 run with him as point guard. Now, listen. I know there's been a lot of grief against Rondo. But I think this kind of tandem duo can work very well. You, know, you still use Caruso for a majority of minutes. I mean, they're very marginal minutes to spare from, you know, four or five minutes. But Caruso was an instant impact from defense to offense to defense to offense. I mean, he just brought it, and the 7-0 run felt great. I mean, it felt great. The Lakers were getting hot from three. You felt maybe this is where the Lakers start pulling away, but no. 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 The Pelicans are actually good, boys and girls, yes. Zion Williamson, despite the fact that on the defensive end, from, from the Lakers at least, I mean, they were... Giving it to Zion pretty good tonight, but he was still able to get points. For, you know, jamming the fucking ball in the basket. Just absolutely beautiful stuff from him. But the Lakers are able to respond. The Lakers are able to reciprocate their points with our points. But it was really, really close. I mean, way too close on my watch in the second quarter. But... Danny Green was just flying everywhere. This guy was fucking everywhere and continued to just be, oh my God, just an absolute disruptor on both offense and defense. And you go into halftime leading 64 to 58 in your building, feeling pretty good about yourself. And listen, <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of people right now who I shall name the LA Times, quite frankly. Looking for stories on LeBron James. Oh, where was he during Kobe's memorial service? Public memorial service. Well, listen. I'm going to let you guys in on a little thing right here, right now. Um, I don't really give a shit where LeBron James was. And that's not doing him any disrespect. Because losses like that. To somebody like Kobe Bryant. Losses like that. People take griefs differently, guys. So if he didn't appear... In a public memorial service, again, key word, public memorial service, okay, if he didn't go to public memorial service, I don't hold it against him. I'm pretty sure he came to the fucking private funeral with the Bryants. Like, okay, like, just guys, relax. It's a fucking non-story, okay? The real story is LeBron James reverting the fucking clock back. And just being his absolute dominant self in this game on the offensive end. All right. He wasn't just dishing the passes out. This guy was just heating up for fun. Okay. Back to back to back threes to open up the third quarter. And despite the Lakers having this firm grip, again, the Pelicans start punching back up. And this is what I really look forward to. You know, with, with the New Orleans Pelicans in the near future. I've said this before the start of the season. And I don't mean to be the fucking Fox Sports assholes like Skip Bayless and Colin Coward. I told you! I told you! I did this! Like, no. I actually said before the start of the season that 
This is going to be a really fun team to watch, especially with Zion Williamson. And Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart. I mean, you still got Drew Holiday. A lot of great pieces there. Uh, shout out to Etwan Moore, who actually does not get enough love for being a solid guard in New Orleans. Or really a Ford. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's positionless basketball nowadays. But the Pelicans are a very fun team to watch. And so they're punching their way back up. Ends the third quarter, 88-86 to 86 in the Lakers' favor. Now, in the fourth quarter. Winning time, boys and girls. Winning time in the fourth quarter. Who stars? Alex Caruso. I'm going to mention his name a lot today in this review because, uh, yeah, he's that fucking good. Alex Caruso blocks my boy, Zo. Ah, that was, <laughs> that was tough to watch. I'm not going to lie. I love Lonzo Ball. That's my boy. But he's with the Pelicans. And, yeah, I'm a Lakers fan first, and so I had to kind of laugh and, like, uh, kind of wince a little bit and just hold myself. Like, yeah, he did that to Lonzo, but it's Caruso, so I can't even fucking be mad. And Caruso was just the star of the show tonight. Um, one of the fucking assists he had in this game was, actually, in the fourth quarter, behind the leg, time pass straight to LeBron James, who fucking dunks it in, and, ah, God, it, you know, to have this game on national television, too, just made it that much better, because all those pansy assholes are talking about, oh, Caruso's not good enough, he went against one of the best fucking defensive guards in Lonzo Ball, and, yeah, Caruso became a highlight reel, and AD, unfortunately, seemingly uh, injures his elbow, slightly tweaks his arm a little bit on a block, which, I mean, it's it's fantastic that he does all this, but please don't get injured. <laughs> Just, oh, God, it, ter it terrifies me. It genuinely terrifies me when AD or LeBron James has that, the scrunching pain face. That That face is any Lakers fan's nightmare right now. Okay, if you see that face, that means, oh shit, season's over. Okay, if if that injury, if those, uh, God forbid, if those fucking injuries, right, if they show up and they persist, you know, percolate like coffee and persist on, we're fucked. Okay, so thankfully, it, it's still good. It's still good, boys and girls. And what's going to be nauseating, okay, what's going to be fucking nauseating from this point on? And let me just emphasize the point of nauseating is the national media is going to get their fucking collective boners all hopped up together and ready to fucking come at the sight of Zion Williamson. And the immediate fucking thing to do is to make, you know, general comparisons to LeBron James in their first matchup ever on national television. Zion wasn't even fucking guarded by LeBron for most of this game. It was AD, and AD was having an offensively pretty shitty night. And so was Zion, to be quite honest. But the fucking idiots at ESPN, Fox, are gonna fucking talk nonstop about LeBron James versus Zion. It's gonna be the dumbest fucking narrative to persist for like two, three months until one of these fucking guys don't make the playoffs or get injured. All right. So it, it just, ah, I'm already getting tired of national media shit already uh, with, with the NBA specifically, because when you watch some of these national television personalities, you know, for a fact, they don't watch these fucking games. They just don't. They just don't. <laughs> you watch a guy like Max Kellerman, Stephen A. Smith, uh, Skip Bayless, Colin Cowherd, they're, they're not watching any fucking games. They're watching those fucking House of Highlight fucking highlight reels. They're watching that shit and go, oh, is that good enough? Yeah, I told you so. But I come on this channel, boys and girls, and try to give you the honest shit. Like, I'm just a dude watching TV, you know, like yourselves, probably popping a beer. And in my case, I just fucking roll up a blunt. Smoke that shit out. 
And I enjoy my sports ball. I do. And when the eye test is pretty seemingly clear that, you know, there's a lot of contradictions out there in mainstream media, I just shut that shit down. I do. I do. And I just enjoy the game. I do, man. And what I enjoyed about this game, again, was how fun this Pelicans team is. Like, this te- this team is going to be fun moving forward. Uh, Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram. Now all-star Brandon Ingram. 34 points, 7 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals. Zion Williamson, 29.6 rebounds, 3 assists, 1 steals. Again, some of these points, like you have to put them into context. 29 points seems like a lot, but relatively speaking, Zion was getting smothered on the defensive side from the Lakers. So put that into mind, boys and girls. Lonzo Ball. Uh, I got to give a massive shout to my boy, Lonzo Ball. 10 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists. Love you, my guy. You are still one of my fucking favorite point guards uh, to come out in the last few years. And I wish you nothing but the best at New Orleans. And he seems like he's found his groove. And I love it. I absolutely love it. He's going to be thriving more throughout the years and can't wait to just watch this team thrive. And shout out to Melly, uh, 11 points, six rebounds, two assists, one, uh, one block. I apologize. Relatively unknown name, but he did get a shout in the NBA all-star rising stars challenge weekend. Uh, I think he was in the team world team and a older rookie. Yes. But a rookie nonetheless, and he's been a solid, solid guy for New Orleans. And so I say the same sentiments again. New Orleans is going to be a really, really fun team moving forward in the near future. But they are right now, uh, for all intents and purposes, still the baby Lakers. You know, Josh Hart, Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, still kind of manifesting themselves into boys and D.I.'s already there. I, fucking Brandon Ingram is already an all-star. I mean, he confirmed he was an all-star. He was participating in All-Star Weekend. But, yeah, he, he perennial all-star from here on out for Brandon Ingram. Best of luck to my old boys out there. But my new boys. My new boys. After an emotional day on February 24, 2020, where the public service... Uh, public memorial service, I apologize, for uh, Kobe Bryant, Gianna Bryant, and the seven other lives lost in the um, Altobelli family, uh, the Mouser family, the Chester family, and the uh, Zabayan family that are all involved. I mean, just terrible stuff, just emotionally draining, heavy, just every, you know, every, every kind of cliche you can use, you know, the, the Lakers are feeling it, but they brought the energy in. They brought the defensive energy in. The Mamba would have been proud. I I think so. I think he would have been proud of the progress, but we all know know, this is just a step. This is just a step. But within the step, we can appreciate, we can appreciate the journey, right? I mean, it's another thing that Kobe used to say all the time, man, just enjoy the journey. And this journey, boys and girls, gave us such a fun offensively just dynamic version of our guys and you know it all starts with lebron james 40 points eight rebounds six assists one block holy fuck (laughs) what a goddamn beast and you tie that up with anthony davis who again on a relatively bad night from him you know offensively 21 points 14 rebounds three assists one steal six blocks God damn, I'm like, oh my god, six blocks? That's some crazy shit, but I'll give you another crazy shit. Danny Green, 17 points, five rebounds, four assists, two steals, one block, and um, from fucking three-point line, he was shooting five of seven. Five of seven! Danny! I would love to see this from you more often, but I, I know Danny Green is a very, you know, break-the-glass fucking bazooka. Sorry, I don't... Why am I holding a bazooka like a fucking rifle? I don't know. But what I also know, don't know, really, is the magic of the Caruso. The Caruso is 
an all around phenomenal experience. If you have been a guy like myself who has seen Alex Caruso at the Summer League in 2017 and watched him progress from Summer League fodder to G League fodder to NBA professional to a highlight real man, it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. And oh my God. This guy does not shrink at the biggest stage. No. When the national spotlight is at the Staples Center, what does Caruso do? He puts on a goddamn magic show. Eight points, three rebounds, eight assists, two steals, one magical block. Oh, and again, it's against my boy Zoe, but you can't. You can't not celebrate it. You, you, you got to look at that thing and think, oh, wow, that's just a beauty. That is just a fucking beauty. And they had that Ric Flair energy instilled in them. Woo! Damn, it feels good. It just feels good to get a top-notch defensive performance from our Lakers, boy like, uh, our Lakers boys like that. It's just refreshing. It's just so nice to have a winning Lakers team. And... Ah, we're at 44 wins. Oh, my God, guys. We, we're at 44 wins. Oh, my Lord. We're actually good again. Oh, holy shit. And here's the thing. It, it's not going to get easier throughout the rest of the season. I'm not celebrating just yet. Because, again, this is a journey to the inevitable goal of what every NBA team wants at the end of the season. It's a fucking championship. But this step in the long journey we have ahead was absolutely brilliant. And we do have a three-game road trip coming up on Thursday, Saturday, Sunday at Golden State Warriors, at the Memphis Grizzlies, and end it off at the New Orleans Pelicans. So, the Lakers... Wrap this game up with a solid win. And now you're telling up to 44 wins in the season. Let's keep it going, boys. Let's keep it going, Lakers. Get that win. Yes. Maybe this is the year. Maybe this is the goddamn year. Both the Lakers and the Dodgers can win a championship. <laughs> if that fucking happens, I, I, I might lose it. I might lose it. I might not be conscious for like two, three days, but... We'll hopefully reach that point when we get there. But boys and girls, follow me at the Sky Lounge on all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily contents. I can't even fucking talk straight, but it feels good to win. So 